Strap on your seatbelts. Welcome to the Addiction Connection Podcast, connecting hope of the gospel with the heart of addiction. I'm your host, Mark Shaw. I've got Jim Quigley, CJ McMurray on this podcast with me. We were just talking, we probably haven't done a podcast together since our dope sick days. Mm. Like how I said that? The dope sick days. <laughs> I love how you said that. People yeah. are like, what? Um, yeah, we did a series. You need to watch it. Uh, on dope sick we did i don't know how many did we do eight of those i think it yeah. was one one per episode i think there was eight episodes eight i episodes. feel like jim was more involved than i was yeah yeah more you were more assistant. of a you were an assistant a guest i was here and there kind of a i often have to take up the slack that cj leaves you know <laughs> it's true it's true wow ben so funkhauser for- does it here at the refuge and you do it for TAC, the addiction uh, connection. I yes, say. T-A-C. T-A-C. <laughs> I, you can say TAC. I like TAC. Um, you know, CJ, you cracked a joke on the podcast we did together, and I missed it. And uh, until I listened to it later, I was like, oh, that was just super funny. I totally missed it. I, you know, I, I can't even remember what the joke was, but it was a couple of podcasts ago when we did it on microdosing and talked about psilocybin uh ma- magic mushrooms lsd mdma all that stuff yeah. and i forget what it was but it was really funny and i i missed it on the podcast so i well, apologize I that, for missing your joke my sense of humor kind of has that effect like people don't get it until later and i think it's maybe just because it's a deep i have such a deep sense of humor i'm a deep guy yeah that's exactly what it is sense of humor. yeah absolutely it it is. And good friends will let you believe that, like us. So, <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Well, no, it's great to see you guys. Both ministries are wonderful. So if you folks get a chance to support Freedom Farm in Boone, North Carolina, or The Refuge, which CJ's wearing the Refuge shirt in yes. Winterset, Iowa. Heart of please, America. Please do so. Heart of America right there. So yeah, I'm I'm listening more carefully now, CJ. I don't want to miss a joke. Oh. Well, we're gonna talk about Kratom. And uh we were we well before we get into it, let me read the Bible. Proverbs 18, 1. And I'm gonna read verse two too, but uh verse one, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire, he breaks out against all sound judgment Mm. and then one of the persons using kratom became like this verse too that's why i'm going to read it a fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only in expressing his opinion Mm. i watched a a video of a guy taking kratom live on air and they you know they elapsed some of the time but he was just expressing his own opinions and talking and going on and on high on kratom and he mixed it up he drank it said it didn't taste good but then he said he really liked the effect of it he probably would have taken a little bit of less of it because he felt like he was a little bit more out of control with the dose he took i think he took five milligrams said he would probably take less than that but um it was it was interesting to watch that and uh, we were all talking, none of us have tried Kratom personally, so we don't have personal experience with this drug, but mm. you guys see it all the time. Jim, tell me about, you had a guy just recently kind of joined the program. We won't, won't name names, but somebody who, or you had a phone call maybe that, that was. Um... Yeah, I did. I had a phone call over last weekend um, of folks that have an 18 year old and they were wondering what to do. His parents or his mom was, you know, saying that uh, she was wondering if Freedom Farm would be um, an appropriate place for him uh, because he hadn't he hadn't ventured into the serious drugs yet. He was only doing Kratom. And um, and I told her, I said, Look, I understand why you'd say that because, you know, the drugs that a lot of the guys at Freedom Farm are doing, you know, you inject it with a needle or um, you're getting it from you're getting it from really shady characters, drug dealers. And, you know, it's illegal, whereas Kratom, you can you can go to, you know, the gas station in North Carolina and you can get it. 
you know um but it doesn't make what he's doing any less different than what the guys at freedom farm a lot what you so basically i was just letting her know that yeah that's uh that's the uh uh the, the attitude towards kratom that's very popular um even more popular um that it's good for you actually um that this has been used in southeast asia um during for, for medicinal purposes uh for years and years and years hundreds of years and it's great um it's it, it does it, it 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 has so many benefits you know so it's a good thing but um i can assure you her son um was was not using it um for those medicinal purposes or anything he was using it to get high that's what he was using it for to get high mm -hmm. and it is a very powerful uh drug we can call it a drug even though you can buy it in a gas station um uh, interestingly enough, from what I understand, like CJ said, I've never, I've never taken it. Um, uh, I used to, I guess, arrogantly say back in my circles, cause Kratom has been around since my, since I was, since I was using, mm. um, I used to arrogantly say in my uh, circles, I do real drugs. I don't need to go and do those drugs. I used to tell people, but, um, you know, since then I have, I have discovered that, uh, and again, this is all just anecdotal from the work that I do. I have people come in here and they tell me about their experience. Um, everybody I know that's been on Kratom, they were told it was a safe alternative to opiate use. Mm. And so they started using it. And what it turned out is they were spending as much money on Kratom as they were on opiates. And uh, it was just as addictive and the withdrawal was actually worse, according to the testimony of everybody I've spoken to, in the fact that there was a lot of hallucinations that came, which did not exist when you're coming off regular opiates. But the so it made them feel like they were actually losing their mind to some degree, whereas opiate withdrawal is typically just very miserable. You feel like you got a serious flu, basically. Um, Whereas the coming off the Kratom, they thought they were, they had those symptoms, but they also thought they were losing their mind because of the hallucinations that they were dealing with. So it was, right. it was really miserable. And it was a shock to them that this thing that you can buy at the gas station and everybody told that, Hey, these tribes in Thailand take it and they're all good. They're fine. Um, what they don't, they don't realize is that, yeah, the, the people in Thailand take the leaves off the tree and chew on them. Kind of like the people in in Peru, in the in the in the Andes, is it the Andes? The Andes Mountains, they chew on the the coca leaves, the cocaine leaves, um, and it and it relieves their it relieves their uh, the the altitude sickness, right? But they're not like processing it and 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 laying it out in large quantities and ingesting large quantities of it like they are doing in the United States, so. Right. They're not even taking it like you would in a medicinal way. Like I said, they're, they're taking it to get high and uh, they're taking large amounts of it comparative to how tribes took it in, um, in Southeast Asia. And, um, and it's, it's, uh, it's becoming just as bad, bad of a problem as, uh, as their opiate use had been. So, yeah. Well, and just for our viewers, it's a, it's considered an herbal supplement, and it, it comes from the leaves of a tree native to Southeast Asia, as Jim alluded to. And when ingested, it it uh, relaxes people. It makes people high. They, you know, um, they drink it down usually in a drink, tea, or they can swallow capsules, you know, with it in there. Um, some people say it acts like a stimulant. Others say it's a sedative. It's hard to know. It's not really regulated by our government. At one point, I think it was 2016, the DEA was going to classify Kratom as a Schedule One, which is the, the ones that they say don't have any therapeutic uh, benefit, any medical use, blah, blah, blah. But then the American Kratom Association, which is pro-Kratom, they're for Kratom, pushed back and the government did not regulate it at the federal level. But there are six states that have bans on the substance. Alabama, which is where I live much of my life. Arkansas, 
Indiana, Tennessee, Vermont, and Wisconsin. So in North Carolina, Iowa, and Kentucky, you can buy Kratom at any gas station. Now, CJ, you had a story about the hard, uh, the the challenge, the difficulty of trying to detect Kratom uh, in a drug test. Ta tell us a little bit about that story. Yes. Yeah, so again, Kratom, I had, this has been about two years, year and a half, two years ago. We had a couple of guys, uh, they loved, I mean, they were pretty new in the program. They'd only been here a few weeks and they just kept exhibiting some bizarre behavior. They'd be out playing ping pong and you would have thought that they were drunk or high on some kind. I was either thinking it seems like they're either on some kind of pills, opioids of some sort, or drunk or a combination. I mean, I was convinced. And we gave them breathalyzers. We gave them uh, the UA and they passed. And we were super confused. Well, I called first, I called uh, a friend from another program, Oliver Underwood, out in Washington. And he kind of filled me in about Kratom a little bit. Then, and Ryan Arrington, I think, was involved in that conversation. Then the next thing I did is I called this guy's girlfriend. Um, and she told me, you need, to, you need to find a test for Kratom. Because that's what he uses. And so what they were doing, and this is, again, gets back to isolating and being deceitful and yes. all those things. They they were taking walks because we were out here and they would have, he had a friend that was dropping off Kratom like once a week or something down the road and they would go for a walk. And the funny thing is, is the other guy that was with, so the, the main culprit, the one that was bringing it in here, he always liked to go on walks, but the other guy never liked to go on walks. All of a sudden he loved to go on walks. We finally tested it. Well, we, were, we told him we're gonna, getting ready to test you for Kratom. And uh, one of the guys said, yeah, we were taking it. And so we didn't even have to drop, you know, drop on them, but we didn't. So now we have Kratom test because you have to test for that. It's just another, it's another thing that you have to test for and look out for. There's just always something. These guys are creative and they're going to find ways to get drunk or high. I mean, that's just the nature of it. But again, it, and they, and they, the one uh, guy just kept wanting to argue, well, it's legal. Well, it's not legal here. Well, they're like, it doesn't say don't take cr Kratom in your paper or in your guidelines. And it's oh, like, right. So it's like one more thing we got to add to our program guidelines, Kratom, you know, it's just like, geez. So it was, but it was, and he was, I think the more I've talked to people, again, I hear a lot about hallucinating. I mean, it sounds a more, I think people get more, it, it seems like more crazy on that than they do just drinking beer the way I understand yeah. it. And so. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how, you know, in, in pro residential programs, which it's been a while since I've been a part of one, but when you catch somebody doing something that's outside of the rules, you know, um, like Kratom, they argue, well, it's not in your policies. It's not in that. But as Jim alluded to a second ago, the heart's still the same. Oh, yeah. And and this is the FDA warned. This has got uh, it affects the same opioid brain receptors as morphine. And the properties that expose users to the risk of addiction, abuse and dependence are there. The FDA warned about that in April of 2022. Jim, talk about the heart of addiction a little bit. Yeah, um, uh, it's interesting as you were saying that I'm just now thinking, um, you know, they're coming up with all kinds of, you know, mat um, me medication assisted, uh, you know, therapy or treatment medication. Assisted. I don't know. I don't know. I always get the T wrong, but, um, you know, they're trying to come up with medications um, to replace for specific drugs. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like as as CJ is is, is alluding to um, or, or or sharing his experience with refuge, the same as mine. Um, residential programs, it doesn't matter which substance it is, where they're focused on the substance, right? Right. And they're trying to find a replacement for that specific sub substance. Like if we give them a safe replacement, that will fix the problem. No, it won't because they'll find something else. And mm -hmm. that's not a cop out at all. It's the reality. You know, I, 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 I list the Kratom in what, what I would call um, like more designer drugs now. 
Um, I, I don't know if that's right. I know ecstasy was a was a designer drug, and mm. uh, and some other drugs I can list in there, but uh, I call them designer drugs because they're they're the ones you go to the head shops and um, and um, and you can buy them at gas stations. And you know the guys now they just call it gas station dope. But uh, there's a, there's a few things, okay? There's there's the spice or the K2 or whatever you want to call it, which is synthetic marijuana, you know, like another category is synthetics, like the synthetics. But uh, kratom is an, an actual comes from an actual plant. It's not a, it's not it's not just like the the spice or the fake marijuana. It's it's literally chemicals that they put on some kind of a, a, a right. product that looks like marijuana in order for you to. <laughs> Anyway, that stuff's terrible. And then they, you guys all remember when we had the bath salts, you know, that was a, that was a thing, bath salts for a while. Right. Um, yeah, they were like zombies. Right? Yeah. And then, you know, we got Kratom. Um, there's another, there's another drug that, that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's, it's called Kava. It's, it's in like C-A-V-A. Um, what I've been told about Kava, it's more, more like a benzo, um, you know, it's like a benzodiazepam. Um, whereas Kratom, like you were saying, a uh, stimulant or, or, um, uh, or, or, uh, uh, similar to like a, an opiate. Um, I've been told that if you take small amounts of it, it acts stimulating. And if you take larger amounts of it, it, it acts more like an opiate. Um, okay, yeah. so that, that's what I've been told. Um, but yeah, mm. and, and, and all it does for, for people that are, that are, that are, trying to minister to people's hearts is it just creates more, um, more hurdles because, uh, um, um, we have to have new tests like CJ's alluding to, we have to get new tests that cost more money. Um, we have to, we have to get, uh, uh, more protective because they sell this stuff everywhere, you know, then go to the gas station, pick it up. Mm. Um, and it just makes, uh, ministering to them a little bit harder because, Again, there's the, well, I'm, I'm taking something that's totally legal that, that I bought at the gas station. I mean, what's wrong? What's the difference between that and drinking an energy drink? You know, you'll hear them say things like that. Oh, yeah. you know? mm -hmm. And yeah. it's like, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not talking about the, just uh, the thing you're taking, but the why you're taking it, you know, that's mm -hmm. what we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And when you try to get down to that, you know, they just want to keep you in the conversation of you know, the thing they're taking and they, and they don't want to get to the why. Right. Right. And, you know, when you start digging there, that's what that's what the, 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 the hard issue is. You know, why why am I why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And um, whereas, you know, the whole rest of pretty much treatment and whatnot, they're just they're just trying to to talk about the thing, you know, the thing that they're taking. Um, they don't want to get down to the why. So and here we go. This leads us right back to where you started, Mark. Proverbs 18, one and two. Mm -hmm. Again, because it's a heart issue and the word of God addresses heart issues, surprise, surprise, but here it is. It's whoever isolates himself, seeks his own desire. Again, isolating, they're walking down here, at least they were walking down the road, they're sneaking around. Again, they know it's wrong or they wouldn't be sneaking around. Right, right. So, so he breaks out against all sound judgment. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only in expressing his opinion. So when you confront them, try to talk to them about again, they're gonna they're gonna try to, you know, just justify it and make excuses or hey, why not? Like you said, Jim, you can't, you know, you can buy it. it's what's what's different about that than the energy drink? Well, and, so, and, and sometimes it's like, well, then why were you if it was just an energy drink? Why were you going walking a mile and a half down the road and having somebody drop it off? Right. Oh, yeah. Like they know the heart, <laughs> they know, but anyway, you, you look at all the planning in that and all the energy and resources and, and none of it's for good, you know, for the good of mankind, it's all for self yep. and selfish exactly. gain. And you think, man, if these guys would reorient their thinking toward Christ and his body and serving and loving other people and put, you know, get this guy who's dropping off Kratom to go by and visit, um, you know, a family in need or crisis or, you know, like use their gifts in that way. And, uh, and that's, what's the tragedy in, in all of drug addiction is we have 
souls who are um, bound by, to themselves, you know, their own prison of living to please self. And um, yeah, it it's sad. It's interesting how verse two goes. This verse three even goes, when wickedness comes, contempt also yeah. comes also, and with dishonor comes disgrace. And so you have just this whole thing of now, you know, CJ, you're the enemy. You're, you know, there's contempt for you. There's dishonor. Um, they're, they're disgraced and they're dishonored and they've been lying and wicked. Um, they've only expressed their opinion, acted like a fool and all because they isolated. I mean, th these three verses go together with your story quite well. It's almost like the Bible's true. Almost. Oh. Surprise, surprise, surprise. We know it is, yeah. So, you know, oh um, it, it, you're also highlighting, our conversations highlighting the, the extra challenge when it comes to dealing with addiction um, uh, biblically, right? So um, these, most of the guys that I know come through here have, have, they've been to places, right? They've been to other programs, They've been through the secular ringer, basically, and they've they've received a education about their addiction. And right. what they've been told is that not that they're self worshipers, like like uh, you just said, uh, Mark. That look at all the planning and everything that they've done in order to to chase their own personal pleasure. They've been told that actually the reason why that's happening is because they're bound to neuro pathways in their brain and it's no fault of their own. Hmm. You know, that's what they're told now, but you know, in the past they have a chemical imbalance that they, that, that have this insatiable um, uh, uh, itch that, that is unlike anybody else uh, that's normal, a normie and they, uh, they can't help themselves. Right. Or, uh, you know, before that, or even maybe today, they have a genetic disposition that um, that drives them to walk down that street and get those drugs because, and it's really not their fault. They were born that way, right? Mm. Um, so that just makes everything just that much more challenging because we all know what it is. You know, they have a heart problem. Uh, they need Christ. They need the Holy Spirit's intervention in their lives, whether it be salvation for the first time or in a sanctifying way, and um, and uh, uh, um, it's it, it's not that they have some outside outside uh, force or um, something that they're that they were born with that's unchangeable um, uh, that that they can't help it, you know. Right. Which is what yeah. they're told. They're told that, um, and uh, so that's why when they when they 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 act the way they do, uh, they they're given that fodder. Right. I don't know why. I don't know why you have such a problem. You know, I don't know why you blame me for what I'm doing. That's what, you know, it just encourages, it just encourages more deceit, self deceit in the whole matter. So victimhood. Right. Yeah. They're not going to be told they're born with a sin nature and there is an outside source, right? That can help them only one. And his name is Jesus. No, because that just doesn't even translate, and they don't even they don't even play with those ideas in the right. secular world. There, exactly. I mean, we are products of material. Um, exactly. I mean, that's it. You know, there is no spiritual realm, no spiritual side. There is no heart that needs to be changed. It's mm -hmm. this is all, this is all biology. It's all it is. Uh, yeah, you, I go ahead. I Mark. think our our approach is. Uh, it's meant to bring the value of man up because we're made in the image of God. We have great value. Now we're born in, in sin and enslaved to that, like CJ alluded to. And so, or, or sad, um, that's, that wasn't you know, and, and as long as you use secular words and ideas, you're really never going to find true healing, true freedom and forgiveness. You're going to always believe that you have this disease. You've got to cope with it. You, it's progressive. It's, it's incurable. It's fatal. It's, you know, all these words that are just defeating. 
And the biblical approach is so much better. Mm. We know that because we've been in both worlds and in, and in the third world of addiction ourselves. And then, you know, <clears throat> but like, you're not going to find true healing and freedom in those secular terms and those secular constructs. It's only in Christ and in the word of truth that, that set you free. The truth will, will set you free or make you free. And I, I love that. And so mm -hmm. CJ, what were you going to say? I, I cut you off. No, no, I was glad I want that. This was good, but I, I stumbled into something right as we were getting started, just stumbled into it. Google kind of is helpful that way sometimes or unhelpful, but it says, uh, so I just looked up Kratom and I found this website. It's called Christian Kratom.com. Nice. Well, yeah. So let's just, just a couple of things. I mean, it's, it's a website, Christian Kratom.com. And at the top of their website has a Christian leaf, or I mean, not, not a Christian leaf, a Kratom leaf, definitely not Christian. Um, that said, and it's got the verse first Corinthians 10 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Wow. Okay. And then briefly, there's just one, a few sentences I want to read in bold black. It says the healing potential of Kratom is remarkable. PTSD, depression, addiction, anxiety, pain, etc., are washed away by the drinking of the leaves of this tree. Not only is it okay for Christians to drink Kratom, it just might be the most compatible medicine with the Christian white walk I have ever encountered. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I, um, I had a, 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 a guy that came to freedom farm a couple of times. He actually ended up staying in, in, in the town that we are located in. And I've gotten very close with his family. He went through a Kratom phase where, uh, when they were trying to, to make it a schedule one, he was advocating in town. You know, he was, because he took, he took it, he got it straight from Thailand. He got it. He bought it by kilo and he was like selling it to everybody. And he, he actually even uh, came up to me one day um, at church. And he said, you really, you really need to try this Jim, because I think you'd be happily surprised at how beneficial it really is. And I was, uh, <laughs> of course I didn't, I didn't try it, but, um, he ended up, he ended up relapsing and, um, uh, which, which, you know, led to, uh, he and I, um, uh, doing some counseling and me support supporting him. And after he kind of got, he got well, uh, you know, again, he actually moved back to Pennsylvania and became very active in his church and whatnot. Um, uh, I talked to him, you know, a good time had passed. And I said, so tell me, man, what is your opinion of that Kratom now? You used to be like this big advocate of it. And he goes, it's terrible. This stuff's terrible. He said, I was just caught up in it. And he said, I was just getting high. That's all it was. It was a, it was a, it was a justification to, for me to continue to get high. That's all it was. Mm. And, you know, the, I wish I had this, this story had a happy ending, but uh, I went to his funeral uh, not too long ago he was oh. he was uh i think 36 years old mm. and uh and um he uh had been doing really well for some time was very active in his church and whatnot and um and uh you know the new killer fentanyl i think he got a pill from somebody mm. i think it had been a long time since he used anything and i think he tried to like sneak a little and uh ended up killing him um wow. so terrible but yeah um from the horse's mouth someone that used to be this big advocate he would have he would have loved that site back then the christian I, yeah, I just looked it up and uh too. you know wow after after he went through it all he told me you know jim i i was i was totally deceived it's terrible terrible stuff that's a good find, CJ. Look at you, the researcher. I, I went to that website too. You can see the leaves and the, and then they have their, what is Kratom and testimonials. Is it sin? I I didn't click on that yet. I'm, I'm afraid to read that. Um, well, I think we but, already know the, an the answer to that. Yeah. Yes. It, it has to do with your heart. 
Amen. And whether it's microdosing, you know, which is going to be touted as the next cure for, or it is already PTSD, PTSD. and, yeah. you know, all the things this thing said about Kratom, they're saying about that. They're saying about, you know, all these, it really matters your heart, you know, your, why am I taking this? Can I do it to the glory of God or not? Um, that's, you know, that's it. So I'm, I'm, uh, hesitant to read that that i won't read it on on the air because... we are not we are not recommending this website to him. no hey you Come know on. i went before the show i found something that was uh that was very alarming um he used to brag how he got his his kratom directly from a direct supplier in thailand which made it you know pure and pure, right. and mm -hmm. all that stuff and uh, the interesting thing was back then it was outlawed in Thailand. It was illegal to take it in Thailand. And um, I just looked it up and they have recently um, uh, made it legal now to cultivate in Thailand. So mm. um, after a very long ban on it right. and what, what that means is that the demand for it in the United States is mm. growing to such a degree that a country actually just changed its policy um so that these so they can cultivate it and ship it to america because it is it is another thing along the lines your last episode with cj microdosing um you know i we should probably do a podcast on ayahuasca at some point you know that's uh that's also the one of the new uh yeah. new things that is just so beneficial for you gets you in touch with your spiritual side man you know yeah um yeah i mean that's more intense stuff or like you actually go somewhere and take that stuff and lay down on the floor and and hallucinate like crazy but anyway right. it, yeah it's just in this long lines of people that are unhappy depressed they're dealing with all these hard issues and they're trying to fix them with some drug you know mm -hmm. and, and and you know us us that have found the answers in scripture it's not like we've discovered something new right mm -hmm. i mean do you think that do you, do you think that god in his revelation hasn't given us the things we need in order to deal with what's going on in our hearts he has it's just people have have just so abandoned it and they're looking for looking for you know some some fix through microdosing or kratom or kava or or something, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, these pe there's people that are made millionaires and billionaires because they 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 just have good marketing campaigns and they tell people, "I have found what will finally fix you," and uh, you know, uh, yeah, people just eat it up. They do. It, <clears throat> that's that's why we do this podcast for people to to know truth, to, to get a different perspective. They're not going to hear this perspective in, in many circles outside of here. And until they start um, censoring us, we're going to proclaim Jesus Christ and his word and his spirit, because we know that's what truly sets captives free. And, um, and that, that's it. And so it doesn't matter what the substance is, but I just thought with Kratom, you know, kind of I've had a few people send me emails and different things. What do you think about this? Or have you heard of this? And of course I have. And, but I thought, well, we, we've never done a podcast on it. Let's talk about it, but let's talk about the heart of man and the heart of addiction and the need for Jesus Christ. And who better than you two guys to do that with? So thank you. <laughs> well, I just think that we should all give a thumbs up or a thumbs down for Kratom. Thumbs down. We're all thumbs down for Kratom. Two. Just, yeah, again, it's just <laughs> another broken cistern that we hew out for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Think that we're going to be satisfied. I mean, it's, it's, it, again, sometimes I feel like we say the same thing because it is always a heart issue. Yeah. And the gospel is the only thing that's going to truly satisfy our yeah. thirsty souls. I mean, we know yeah. that. And, and not that we don't fall into, doing it ourselves in other ways. I mean, we, we fall into it. We're st still sinners saved by grace, but, but we know the truth. We've been set free from it. We've been ruined for anything less than what Jesus has for us. So we can't, we just, and, and, and that's our heart. 
here at the Addiction Connection and just in everything that we do. We want to see people find joy and freedom and remedy in Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better. There's nothing and better. I, I think God makes the ordinary, the mundane, exceptional and extraordinary, you know? Mm. The fact yeah. that I'm I'm married and I have children and I have, you know, the world would say, you know, you need multiple sexual partners you need to be happy. You need multiple blah, blah, blah. You need, you know, I don't find that to be true at all. One wife for life, what, you know, one set of family, you know, it, it's, it's awesome that the, what the world would consider ordinary and mundane is God has, is bringing great joy and peace and love uh, you know all the fruit of the spirit uh in in what is mundane like you just said cj so it's it's awesome well Jim? you know go ahead oh go ahead CJ, one CJ. thing so do you a, a book that i read and i'm just trying to okay so a while back that was really good i think it's, it's an old book from jeremiah burroughs the mm. rare jewel, jewel, the rare jewel of Christian contentment. Yes. Written a long time ago, but mm. such a good book for like, that is what you're talking about, Mark. That's in it. the ordinary, sometimes I think we're, we get too caught up in thinking we got to have this and it's got to be magnificent and extravagant and really all the little blessings that are really not all that little, the things that we have, just being content and thankful for those things. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. So, Amen. you know, a rare Mary, jewel of Christian contentment, Jeremiah Burroughs, great book. You know, it, it's funny. Mary sent me an article and I haven't read it fully yet. I've read parts of it. I'm planning on doing a little podcast on it, but I've always um, thought about Michael Jackson. So I grew up in the eighties. He was the king of pop. He was huge, but here he was trying to find sleep he had everything that the world would say you need to make you happy he had the fame the money the everything he had everything you know and yet he couldn't he didn't have sleep and that's what ended up taking his life so it's going to be an interesting podcast when i get to that but just um you think about what the world says makes you happy isn't what necessarily the bible says that makes you joyful and mm -hmm. brings joy and and um yeah i mean that that's the the joy of living as a christian i mean I, that's why our theme next year at the summit is the joy of transformation there's joy in living this life of being a christ follower and i i can't wait to unpack and explore some of that next year um you know we got plenty of stuff to do between now and then um but you think about Michael Jackson had everything the world had to offer, and yet he, it, it fell short. So, Sound, yeah, Solomon kind of said something very similar. In yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what I was thinking about when I said, like, finding joy in the ordinary things. It's the book of Ecclesiastes. So, mm -hmm. all right, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you both. Visit Freedom Farm. What's the website? Freedom Farm. FreedomFarmMinistries.org. Dot org or Winterset, Refuge, Iowa. RefugeWinterset.com. Do not view ChristianCratum.com. Right. Do not view that one. Yeah. Well, if you do have a mindset that you're you're uh, going to pick it apart, and that's what hey. I'm going to do in a little bit. So, yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Take care and God bless. God bless.